Hello and welcome to Deja Vu, the Ithacan's weekly review podcast. I'm reviews editor Jake Leary, and I'm here today with assistant multimedia editor Matt Maloney. Whew, that's a mouthful. All right, we're going to do a slightly different show today. We're not going to focus on a review section. We're just going to jump right into the topic. We're going to talk about piracy. But before we do that, I want to talk about the genesis for this, which was actually one of our reviews. And you want to tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Well, first, I'd like to just say thank you for having me. I've always kind of wanted to be on the podcast. But um, My pleasure. So I reviewed Joey Badass's new album, All American Badass, which if you're a rap fan, you should definitely listen to. It's a fantastic collection of songs. You know, he really branches, Joey really branches through as like, he's finding himself as an artist and I really think he's finding his sound on this album, which is fantastic. And I love to hear that because I love Joey Badass. But, um, when I was going to review this album, I initially was going to review this and the Kendrick Lamar album and the Kendrick Lamar album got pushed back week and Joey's album got leaked because someone in the physical pressing of the album stole the album, put it on Google drive and tweeted the link. So now it's out on the internet and everyone has it. So this is probably going to hurt Joey's album sales And, you know, while the fans get the product early, which is what we want anyway, you know, the flip side is that Joey is then hurt on the financial side. So that's a problem there. Yes. And this is a perennial issue, especially with music, something that's very easily piratable. And we're kind of uh, trained now mentally to expect things instantaneously and expect them, you know, all out there in a way that's somewhat free. I mean, Spotify is like all of the music you could ever want ever is right at your fingertips. Um, So when something like this happens and suddenly we can have access to it, we're going to jump on it. Oh yeah. But then there's kind of like a, an ethical question there. Should we be doing this because this does hurt the artist? So where do we draw that line? How do we balance that? Oh yeah. And you know, I think that like, it's hard for me to feel bad about pirating music in some cases. Like, my general stance is that if it's something that I'd buy anyway, like, it's okay to download it if illegally as long as you also buy it. Like, I know that for myself, when I get home and I can get to Best Buy or a CD store, I'm going to pick up that album because I am an avid collector of CDs, so I, am going, I was going to do that anyway. On the flip side, when you hear artists like Drake, you know, I don't really like Drake that much. Side note, Matt Maloney reviewed the latest Drake album two weeks ago. (laughs) Yes, um, not a big fan. You can read that, but that's beside the point. Um, But, you know, you see music videos of guys like Drake and, you know, Gucci Mane throwing money in the air and throwing money around like it doesn't matter to them and then turn and say, oh, but don't pirate my music because that hurts me financially. Like, so you're going to really go about throwing around how rich you are and then one person downloads your album and that hurts you like that. That sort of hypocrisy bugs me, so I don't feel bad doing it to those guys, but, like, I don't know. It, it's a weird double-edged sword for me. It definitely is, because you could argue that they're putting on a persona, you know? They're putting on a face to appeal to their fans and to have, like, a character when they're performing and when they're making music. So they may say, yeah, I mean, I can throw money all over the place, but at the same time, they do they do still need that financial boost, you know? They still need to earn an income somehow. Like, when... When do you get to the point where so many people are pirating their music that it's actually not financially sustainable for them to keep doing it that way? Yeah, I mean, f- my thought on it would be that guys like Drake and, like, for example, Chance the Rapper, you know, he, when he put out um, Coloring Book, that was exclusively through Apple Music for the first, like, month, I think, of the release. So he was making money off of that. And he, Chance the Rapper is someone who puts out all of his music for free anyway, so he might not be the best example. But guys who are big enough to have these exclusive deals with streaming sites, they have reached a point where they probably have income coming in from other places. So I would say that the bigger artists, is it really the biggest problem if someone pirates some of their stuff? I don't really think so because they have, on top of like the ex- exclusive contracts that they have with Apple Music or Spotify, they then turn around and they have clothing brands and they have people paying them for endorsements and advertisements and stuff like that. So when I, it's not okay at any point because it's a crime, you know, it's a federally punishable crime. We have to keep always remember that. But ethically, I feel as though it is less of a problem when they can support themselves otherwise. You know, if you're like, there's some indie band who you're stealing their music from them and like they get paid like $30 for a show and 
that album that they're selling is their main source of income, that's wrong in my mind. But what about all the other people involved in the production of that album? There are still people that are supported by that, people who are producing the album, people in marketing, the invisible people behind that that are going to be hit because of that. That's true too. But my thought on that is that if they're big enough to be working on, like, I'm going to keep using it, but if they're big, big enough to keep working on Drake's album, I'm sure they're getting a lot of work. To say that this is bad for Joey because it's going to hurt his first week sales, yes, but it's not like... And people can get it for free, but, you know, a lot of people at this point have those streaming services like you were talking about. You know, Spotify is the extent of the music world at your fingertips for a low monthly fee. So if people already have that and this album's on Spotify, he's going to make money off the streaming. You know, I think that conversation turns into more of selling physical copies of albums versus just streaming them. You know what I mean? I see what you're saying, and it's it's an issue that I've like I fought with people on for so long, and it's a difficult fight to make because I'm a total total hypocrite. You know, I watched so many movies as a kid because my mom pirated pirated them from China. You know, that's how I saw it so much when I was little, and you know because i'm a nerd i don't pirate music i pirate like audiobooks and books so if i'm like when a little me is sitting there like well i want to listen to harry potter but i can't do it so i'm going to pirate it and it's the same argument it's the same idea you know and i think people have like different sensitivities when it comes to what they're willing to pirate like is there anything you won't pirate any genre or any medium of something for me as a music person you know when my favorite artists come out with stuff i refuse you know, those people have earned my respect as artists and as people who need financial income. And I feel like guys like, for me personally, Kendrick Lamar and Joey Badass, although in this case I did take the stream version, that was mostly because I was writing the review, I still plan on buying the album. For me, it's more of if I'm really rocking with you and I really want to listen to your stuff, then I'll wait for it because it's something that I know is going to be good. Whereas... Things like, and again, to bring them up, Drake. If Drake dropped an album and I heard it got leaked, I'd listen to the leak first, and that would determine whether I listened to it legally or not. That's not how things work. Oh, no, you it's can't, not. You can't pick and choose what you're going to take. Like, if you're going to, if you want to listen to something or you want to watch something, you don't get a trial run. You've got to actually buy it. Well, you don't. But, you know, we live in this this society where it's possible. And we live in a world where people are wrongly taking these things from people. And I think you cut out the problem completely if people stop stealing it in the first place. But because it's available to people, people will do it. Well, just because we could doesn't mean we should. That's true, too. That's also a good point. You know, I feel like as long as people are still ripping these things off of artists and putting them out before the artist is really ready for them... It's something that we're not going to be able to stop. Well, no, we're not going to be able to stop, but it's it's like climate change. Everybody says, you can't do anything about this, but the only way to do something about it is if everybody is on board and starts working towards it. The only way to stop piracy is if everybody gets on board. And that sucks, you know, because it means, okay, I have to pay for things. And media is expensive. You know, if I want to download a season of Game of Thrones off of iTunes, it's $40, or I could pirate it, and there we go. I have it for free, you know? that that's a hard thing to live with um, and a hard thing to deal with. But technically, it's what we should do. Oh, and you're not wrong. I completely agree with that. And it's also like my little hypocritical part of myself that thinks like, oh, you know, artists who deserve it should get the money that they deserve. But, you know, like, who am I to say who deserves what? And that's the ultimate crux of the itch issue. It's, exactly. It's such a, like a pick and choose. It's all right. I like this person, so I won't pirate from them. And I don't know this person, so it's okay. But a lot of times the person you don't know is the one who really does need it. And then there is that paradox too, where you'll test run something if you're unfamiliar with it. And if it's the smaller guy, but you'll just kind of be okay with spending the money on the bigger person and the bigger person chances are already has that following already has that money so they don't necessarily need it like it's it's a balance of need needs and wants in an age where everything is available and we make our decisions based on what we want to do not necessarily on what we should do um, and i think that really does make things difficult oh yeah it's it's a weird time to be alive right now because you know like you said, with things being available so readily to all of us, you know, it 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 really creates this really weird ethical thing that we're that 
is prompting this conversation right now. You know, if if we couldn't get things this quickly, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But because we can, it invites all of these problems. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm standing here talking to you about this and telling you why piracy is wrong. But when you told me that the album was leaked, I said, yeah, go for it because we could get a review up earlier. So even then I'm crumbling under my own actions and it's still not holding up to, you know, what I'm saying. And I think that from what I've seen and what I've heard is like the biggest issue with piracy is it's a lot of do what I say, not what I do. And here I am, I'm preaching the exact same thing and there's no good solution because everybody won't stop. You know, that doesn't make sense. Even the people who know it's wrong or really think it's wrong and will die on that hill are still going to go and download the Sorcerer's Stone on audiobook. You know, that's just how it is. Sounds like you're speaking from personal experience. I'm not going to comment on that. Um, All right. Thank you for standing here with me today. Uh, to talk about this issue it was, again, it's another one of those contentious things that doesn't have a resolution. And I feel somewhat bad sometimes leaving all of you listeners out there in the middle of this, but so it is. Yeah, I guess our job isn't to answer the questions, but to pose them. Yes, very philosophical. Now, if they want to go and read your review, where can they do that? Sure. I'll be tweeting the link at Matt underscore Maloney 25 on Twitter. You can also go to the Ithacan.org under the review section of the Life and Culture page, and it will be right there. Yes. Please support the Life and Culture page. Please support the reviews because we're going to do more of them. And if there's anything you want us to review, you can send an email to IthacanLifeAndCulture at gmail.com, and I will gladly take any potential things you might want to review if you want to review them yourselves if you want to if you want me to review them oh yeah words are tough today it's one of those things you understand what i'm saying all right that's going to do it for our show this week it was a slightly different way of doing things but again that's i think what the topic warranted and this is something i've wanted to talk about for a little while but matt brought it up and really helped me crystallize the idea so once again thank you for deja vu i'm jake leary thank you for listening Mm -hmm.